I've played every single character that's released in Genshin Impact, but I have never laughed more playing a character than Navia, which might be a little mean considering the circumstances. But believe me, I wasn't laughing at Navia. I was laughing at the super loud shotgun noise followed by the disintegrating crocodile. I genuinely love playing this character so much. Her design is peak. This character would look good in anything. She'd probably look so good in a cardigan that you'd swipe your card again. And if Genshin Impact keeps putting out designs like this in the year 2024, our wallets are going to be in for a cruel summer. We've all been looking forward to Navia since August, and she's finally been released from the vault. And today, I'm gonna teach you how to build her with artifacts, weapons, teams, and I'll go over if it's better to pull for constellations or her weapon. If you like these types of videos, let YouTube know the video doesn't suck by leaving a like and subscribing. And with all that being said, my name is Braxavone, and let's talk about Navia. Unlike some characters we've seen in the past, Navia uses her entire kit. Basically, that means she'll use a ton of resources to max her out, and this is why we can't have nice things. The bulk of her kit revolves around her skill and crystallized shards. For her skill, she whips out her umbrella and temporarily becomes American. Her umbrella is a shotgun, and if you've played any Call of Duty game, you know the other team's gonna hate that. Her skill's damage is based on the amount of crystal shrapnel stacks you have, which is based on how many crystallized shards you've picked up with your party. Crystallized shards are made from Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, and Electro reacting with Geo and because of her second passive ability, you're incentivized to play her with two characters from those elements. Each character that is one of those elements grants her 20% attack up to a maximum of two stacks. So basically, 40% attack bonus for free. And those characters can be the same element. You can run two Geo and two Pyro, for example. Anyways, back to her skill. She can hold up to six shrapnel stacks, and when you use her skill, she'll consume all of the stacks. But at C0, only a maximum of three get used towards her multiplier or any other bonuses. Constellations can change the value of having more than three stacks, but I'll talk about that later. The more that she uses, the more pellets come out of her umbrella, which leads to more damage, and at three stacks, you're actually doubling her damage multiplier. But Brax, I hate crystallized shards. They're so annoying to pick up. Well, luckily for you, Navia is a human fucking vacuum. Like my dogs after dinner, she'll inhale everything on the ground with her hold skill, letting you pick up a ton of crystallized shards at a time. Oh, and by the way, the shotgun has two charges, generates three to four particles on a nine second cooldown, and has a hit of Uja. Okay, so you've just finished playing Duck Hunt and want to know what's next. Well, luckily for you, her first passive turns her into Arataki Numero Uno Ito and infuses her basic attacks with Geo while giving her a 40% basic attack damage bonus. It's only four seconds, but with two skill charges, that's eight seconds total of rock solid Geo. Oh, and look at her charge attack. She knows how cool she is. Now, I thought that Navia might be the first character without a blank space in her head, but then I heard her do this. Fire! Navia's burst is a volley of death in the name of the Spina de Rizula. Basically, it's a semi-invisible AoE around Navia about the size of Ayato burst that randomly targets enemies in it. As she moves around, the circle is gonna follow her. Enemies in range will take AoE geo damage at random. However, like the rest of Navia's kit, it only hits enemies on or close enough to the ground, meaning Navia is canonically a ground-type Pokemon. It's got 12 seconds of firing, a cooldown of 15 seconds, and costs 60 energy, making our energy needs not too big unless she's a solo geo and you're funneling particles to another character. One other thing about her burst is that she can gain a crystal shrapnel stack once every two and a half seconds while her cannons hit, so it makes it pretty easy to max out her skill charges, and it doesn't snapshot so you don't have to wait for buffs to use it. There's basically no point in using it in buffs in general. When you're leveling Taylor Swift, aim for her skill first, since that's about half her damage, basic attacks next, and burst last. Ultimately, Navia feels like a boss killer, and that's honestly super fun, especially since so many floors of Spiral Abyss now are just bosses. Seriously, I have not not had this much fun with a character in a while. I love her quick swap short field time play style because it's super easy to adapt and punch out a ton of damage really quick. Hey Briggs, how do I do a ton of damage? I'm glad you asked. Let's talk about artifacts. You may know Navia as an excellent boss, and she certainly isn't delicate, but I'll bet you didn't know she could do this. Despite her being a great fighter, her artifact sets might not be exactly what you expect. Actually, I mean, it probably will be exactly what you expect because there's a new set out this patch. Nighttime Whispers in the Echoing Woods is going to be her best in slot, generally speaking. It'll give her an 18% attack buff for the two-piece and up to 50% geo damage under the right circumstances with the four-piece. The circumstances are just using her skill and having a crystallized shield. It's super easy. With a certain Hydro character, though, her best set changes. Hey, boys, is your Bonnie 80% water? Because I'm thirsty. 
Misty. If you're playing Navia with Farina, her best set becomes four piece fuck the police, which will give her a bonus to her basic attack, as well as a ton of crit rate for the four piece set. Other playable sets are Golden Troop, which gives a ton of skill damage if you make sure to skill right after swapping in, a mix of geo damage and attack sets, skill damage and geo sets, and four piece gladiator, four piece husk, and four piece retracing bolide. I do recommend farming her new set if you're not playing her with Farina, since the damage difference can be pretty noticeable depending on how perfect your play actually is. One thing to note is that a lot of players are just gonna unga bunga with Navia, and that's fine because her kid is pretty uh, unga bunga -able. but it means that lots of folks will miss out on the golden troop four piece effect for some of their gameplay, which makes it actually not as good to run the four piece on for the average player. The only thing tighter than the golden troop skill window is the garters on her legs. So specifically, if you have a good combo of the two piece sets I mentioned before, and you don't pay close attention to set effects and rotations, I recommend a combo of those over four piece golden troop, despite what this sheet shows. That's only if you're not going to farm her new set or not play her with Farina. Navia also solves one massive complaint the community has had, which is Archaic Petra. Archaic Petra always has the issue of the wearer has to be the one to pick up the shards for it to work. Well, because Navia has the suck power of a wind turbine, she can essentially force Archaic Petra's effect, meaning that if you use her as a quick burst of damage in your team, you can also have her be a 35% damage bonus support. Petra is still a decent set for her personal damage. It is kind of a meme, but I've gotten it to work in Endgame. If it doesn't work for you, then don't blame me. In fact, pretend I never recommended this. It's for a different video completely. For Sailor Venus's main stats, you're going to want an attack percent sans, a geo damage goblet, and a crit rate or crit damage circlet. If you're playing Navia as a solo geo character, her ER needs can be pretty steep. But with that said, ER sans feels pretty bad damage wise, so if you can get away without it, I definitely would do that. Ideally, you can just get high ER between her weapon and substats. I recommend running two geo with her and using an attack sans while focusing on getting to 130% ER in substats. But as a solo geo, aim for 180% worst case scenario. Make sure to get Get enough energy recharge because otherwise Silver and Malus are going to get chapter 9. Here's some quick notes in a build summary so that way you can kind of see everything we've talked about in this section. Hopefully it helps you understand how to build her and you can get to farming. Speaking of weapons, let's talk about some options for Navia, including an insane free-to-play weapon. Navia has one of the coolest aesthetics of any character in the game. I, I mean, just look at those glasses. In every cutscene, trailer, and gameplay demo, she never goes out of style. But when I saw her signature weapon, I knew I was not making rent next month because I am a slut for battle axes. Verdict is one of her best weapons since it synergizes with her kit as well as being a solid stat stick. And it just looks cool as fuck. But with that said, R5 Serpent Spine with max stabs, it's sta R5 Serpent Spine with max stacks and teams with Bennett performs about as well as Verdict, making it a solid lower spender choice if you don't want to swipe. If you don't have Serpent Spine, maybe you are lucky enough to have Beacon, Wolf's Gravestone, Red Horn, or Unforged with Zhongli's Shield Up. Even R1 Serpent Spine is pretty good with Bennett teams. And if you woke up and put on your clown shoes today like I did, you may have Talking Stick. It's not good, I just wanted to let you know that you're not alone, and somebody else also has that weapon. It's not me though, I lied to you. Okay, but let's say you don't have any of those. Well, luckily for you, we're back to December and getting a free four-star Claymore that's basically like Wolf's Gravestone, but with some energy recharge in exchange for attack. The ultimate Overlord's Mega Magic Sword is an insanely strong Claymore, and it's 100% free. It's a high base attack four-star with 30% ER at max level, and at R5, you get 24% attack bonus from the passive for doing absolutely nothing. But that's not all, because if you've done the Melazine quests, you can double that effect up to a free 48% attack stat. This Claymore is ridiculously good on most Claymore users in the game, and you should consider it for Navia if you're free to play. If you're struggling with energy recharge because you're playing her in solo geo, you can always try Sacrificial Greatsword. Because of that extra skill use you can get, it ends up being pretty good, though you're not able to guarantee 100% of the time that you're going to get that reset. Sacrificial Greatsword will give you extra particles and some ER, and you also have the option of Favonia Sword if you want, but generally speaking, I'd recommend the Ultimate Overlord's Mega Magic Sword for free to play players unless you have a 5-star weapon already built or you missed the event. If you have it, then you can keep your Primo Gems for Bayonetta next patch. Here's one weapon chart you can use for rankings just as a reference. The thing to be careful of with this is that Bennett is included on this team, which means that weapons with a lower base attack will perform a little bit better. Just for example, if you took Bennett out of these teams, Serpent Spine wouldn't be as close to Navia's signature weapon in damage, but it'd still be really good overall. Next up, let me tell you about Navia's teams.
Navia's biggest issue is going to be her team synergy, so I'm going to go over some of the best teams that I've played with her, the ones that felt the best to play, got the easiest Spiral Abyss clears, etc., and then sort of talk about what I expect for her in the future. The first team I want to showcase I like to call Red, because there's two Pyro characters on it, Bennett and Shang Ling. Now, I like this team a lot because you have the classic bennett Shang Ling combo that comes with basically every single Happy Meal at your local McDonald's, but you also have a character that can take up some of that field time while Shang Ling's burst is going, and not have to worry about snapshotting and making sure that every character can get within Bennett's burst the entire time. Because Xiangling snapshots Bennett's burst, you basically can use Xiangling and then have Navia out the whole time. Bennett's C6 is not going to override her Geo Infusion, and you can basically use her within Bennett's circle to deal a ton of damage. This team is fantastic for bossing, especially because you have Zhongli shield to protect you from being staggered while you're taking your aim shots, create more crystallized shards with him as well, and have Geo Resonance as well as his resistance shreds. So overall, this team is really fantastic. This one was the most comfy one I played for bossing. As for content with multiple enemies just kind of everywhere, it is a little bit tougher because you do need to get really up close to make Xiang Ling and Navia able to actually do anything. So she's a boss killer and this team specifically helps her with that. Now the next team, I, I just call this, uh, Taser. This is this is just a Taser team. Now this team specifically is a version of another team I'm going to show you in a minute, but that's just meant to help clear out a bunch of enemies in one floor. So if you don't have one boss, you need to hit them with AoE. Fischl Beto is going to get the job done for that. And Electro Charge is absolutely busted for Navia. Because you can have a dual aura of both Hydro and Electro, you're functionally able to create a ton of crystallized shards, which are basically going to help you load up Navia's shrapnel and fire a ton more damage with her elemental skill. And while you're swinging Navia, a sword, you're going to be driving Sing Cho and Beto together. So ultimately, this team does function very well. I found a lot of success with this team against multiple enemies. It does fall off a little bit for bosses because you're basically playing a three and a half person team at that point. But Navia is a boss killer and she can dish out some pretty solid damage, regardless of Beto being there or not. So that was just a taser option that I had. I call this next team Miss Americana and the Crider Prince. This is basically the taser team, but with Albedo. Now, I have found a lot of teams that can technically use use Albedo with Navia. In fact, this team right here with the Bennett Shang Ling is a team that can use Albedo. But what I found is that crystallized shards aren't quite strong enough to stop Navia from getting staggered a lot of the time, especially against big bosses and especially against multiple enemies attacking at once. That creates problems for her, especially if you're trying to absorb those crystallized shards. So what I recommend is playing this team if you want to play Albedo. The reason being that Sing Cho's rain swords can offer you some sort of damage reduction, which will really help you be able to use her elemental skills without the super strong shield that you need. The damage reduction and stack resistance is going to help her a lot, especially because the damage reduction will stack with the crystallized shields and preventing you from falling over when you're trying to use her skill. Albedo's personal damage is also pretty high, and again, you have the dual aura of Hydro and Electro here, so you're going to be generating a ton of crystallized shards between these two, and truthfully, it's just a really solid overall team. I don't like Albedo here, even though you can play him here, and I think it's technically more damage, just because in practice, the enemies will stagger you a lot. But this team doesn't really have that problem as much. The next team I'm going to show you is called Death by a Thousand Cuts because it takes about 1,000 attacks to kill anything because I have the world's weakest Ayato. I was giving this team a try because I wanted to see how Navi could function as an archaic Petra user, and it, she's honestly not too bad at it. I mentioned this in the artifact section, but she can go ahead and absorb crystallized shards by holding her E, and by doing that, you can effectively funnel a bunch of archaic Petra buffs into her all at once. Using Elon's burst is going to give you a damage bonus to your on-field character. Ayato is also going to have a burst that buffs him a little bit. And with Archaic Petra being able to buff your Hydro damage and Bennett able to help your on-fielder, this team can dish out a pretty okay amount of damage. I didn't have too much luck with it in Abyss. It wasn't as strong as I had hoped, but my main goal was to see if I could have two carries on one team. By that, I mean Ayato who takes up some field time and Navi who takes up some field time. And with Bennett's burst, you can get a full Ayato elemental skill duration done and get two Navi shots off before the Bennett burst disappears, which means that both of these characters can get Bennett's buff. I also tested this with some other characters as well, but generally speaking, it's not going to be as strong as some of the other options. It can work. You can play her with your fave, especially if your fave has short field time. But in general, as an Archaic Petra user, she is a little bit niche right now. Where she does work really well with Archaic Petra, though, is in this team with Farina, Yelan, and Jean. I like to call this team 
false god. You can give Jean Virtus and Venera to shred Hydro Resistance, and then you can have Farine to apply Hydro, Yolan to apply Hydro, Jean to counteract Farina's health depletion, and then give you a ton of fanfare stacks, Yolan to give you a whole bunch of damage bonus. Basically, this team is just a whole bunch of buffs and a whole bunch of damage from Farina, Yolan, and Navia. And overall, it's a pretty damn good team. I actually really enjoyed playing this one. I wanted to add something in my testing that I found later on that I just really, really didn't vibe with. Running Bennett as the sole healer for a Farina team with Navia feels terrible. I know a lot of theory crafters have been using this team as a benchmark, and I understand that in theory it works, but in practice it just feels so unbelievably bad to me. And there's a lot of teams with Navia that do feel really bad to me, just like there's a bunch of teams that feel really good. But the combination of Bennett and Farina just feels super unsustainable and unreliable, especially when you have enemies running around the map, so you have to leave Bennett circle, or you have lots of enemies that are going to be chipping away at your HP, and you can only have certain characters out on the field at a time, and you have to manage your HP with just Bennett burst. It is a lot to handle, and honestly, I don't recommend playing those two together, even though it is technically one of the highest benchmarks. Overall, what we need is some other characters that take up just a little bit of field time, but not too much, so that way you can play two of those characters in one team, and one of them can be Navia. But for now, I do really like this team for bossing, I like this team for floors that have lots of enemies, I like this team because it's this team but can work on bosses, and I like this team because you can just play another character in it and and it's fun. And I would have liked this team if my Ayato was an absolute dog shit. Now with all that being said about Navia teams, I'll probably release more Navia updates if we get characters that synergize with her extraordinarily well, but for now, I definitely recommend trying some of this stuff out. Next up, I'm gonna go over her constellations and talk about if you should get her constellations or her weapon. Genshin Impact has been making the first few constellations strong for a while as an incentive to spend just a little bit more of your pulse. And if you have a good taste in characters, I can understand why you'd want Navia constellations. Her C1 and C2 are pretty solid value. <laughs> Get it? Solid? Because because she's a Geo character? C1 gives her energy straight to her bank based on how many shrapnel stacks are consumed. Each shrapnel restores three, up to a maximum of nine total energy per shot. Now, it's hard to say exactly how much energy you can expect back every rotation, but this helps a lot with her energy bottlenecks and lets you invest more in other stats. It also lowers the cooldown of her burst by one second per shrapnel, so it's technically possible to have 100% uptime on her burst with this. C2 is another buff to her skill, giving it more crit rate based on the amount of shrapnel. Each shrapnel up to a max of 3 grants 12% crit rate, for a grand total of up to 36% crit rate. This buff makes it so that you can invest more in crit damage, though if you're playing her on field at all, it's still smart to build a reasonable amount of crit rate for your other attacks. It also makes it so that when your skill hits an opponent, a hit from her burst will trigger in that spot and count as burst damage, so it's a bit of added damage as well. C3 increases the level of her skill by 3, which is about 50% of her overall damage, so you can expect a pretty decent gain there. C4 is an explosive. After her burst explodes on opponents, they lose 20% geo resistance, so it improves all of her damage and could also improve the damage of someone like Albedo. C5 increases her burst level by 3, and C6 makes it so that if you have any shrapnel past 3 when you fire her skill, every single extra stack will buff her skill's crit damage by 45%, which is a massive damage buff. It also returns all the extra stacks to Navia, so you can actually really cook with this one. If you have 6 stacks and you fire off 1 shot, you're gonna get 3 stacks back in Instantly. It is insanely good. Pretty sure the Spino de Rosula could take over the government with this one. Real vigilante shit. Now the question is, are her constellations better than pulling for her weapon? Well, the short answer is yes, but the long answer is just most of the time. The thing is, while her axe is a really solid stat stick, there's a lot of weapons that can be competitive for Navia. If you have Serpent Spine or any 5-star Claymores, her weapon isn't going to be so much better that you should go for it all the time. If you play her without Bennett, the difference will be a little bit bigger but it's still not so significant to put you out of business without it. But if you are newer to the game and you're lacking those claymores, this weapon banner is actually pretty decent since it has Miss Splitter Reforged on it, which is an amazing sword to lose that 50-50 on. That psychological damage from missing the 50-50 though? Shake it off, the sword is still worth it. I know you're gonna end up swiping on the weapon anyways because it's a fucking axe, but it's worth noting that her Constellation 1 and 2 are decent gains overall. Just make sure not to spend money that you don't have. I never recommend spending in gacha games and I only started doing it because it's my job to make videos, unfortunately, on gacha games. But at least they're gacha games that I enjoyed, so, you know, that's worth something. I really like Navia, but she definitely needs some more characters like her in the game to come up with a solid team that isn't just Bennett Xiang Ling. But you might enjoy her anyways, because that damage per screenshot slaps pretty hard. Let me know what your favorite warm drink is, and I'll catch you next time.